Welcome back to the Jones Zone, guys. In a previous video I uploaded, I mentioned that progressives, or I guess you could say people who are on the far left, were under the kingdom of Satan. I did say this, but I didn't specify why. And I don't think that was fair of me to do that. So I'm just going to come out with it now and explain why it is that the left are allied with Satan. But before I do, I really want to make it clear that the left are not just the only political groups who are under uh, the kingdom of Satan. I honestly think Satan plays both sides against one another. He's like the, the Rothschild banksters, you know, the robber barons and all of them who've been funding both sides of war, uh, playing the left and the right against one another. Only so that in the end, it's like the banksters, the, the weapon manufacturers, uh, these uh, organizations are the only ones that are left profiting from all the death and the destruction. So, having said that, I think progressives are unknowingly allying with the devil because of their stances on uh, social politics. Now, granted, they do want free health care for everyone, and they tend to be uh, you know, pro-environment or environmentally friendly and all that. Um, and when it comes to foreign policies, they actually tend to be anti-imperialist, which is a good thing. Now, I think I'm perfectly qualified to critique the left because for the longest, I've been a supporter or a, a member of the left, the progressive left, because I didn't like all the racism and the greed that I was seeing in the world and uh, particularly in the United States. So I was won over by this. But when I look at the trade-off, you know, I don't think being a progressive is worth all the trouble and the societal degradation it causes in the end. And again, this doesn't mean that all people who are on the left, you know, are evil people. But the best way that I can put this is that they are being used as a vessel to do evil things, namely killing babies, which is something we see in Exodus of the Bible, uh, when the Pharaoh requested that every household, you know, kill their firstborn to prevent the birth of the Messiah. Now, I'm not going too deep into this right now, but let me just say that you really don't even have to look at it from a biblical point of view either. Historically, Carthaginians were sacrificing their children to Baal, who is a fallen angel. Okay? They are, these gods, they are angelic beings, spirits that do not have fleshly bodies like we do. So, no. Uh, there is no uh, red man with horns walking around, but rather we have spirits like Satan and his demons who are floating around, I guess you could say. Yeah, they're floating around, possessing people and causing them to do evil things like murdering and raping and uh, sexualizing children. Yes, the Bible actually accounts for the sick stuff going on today in our societies, and it's not made up. So, if you find it disgusting that people are sacrificing babies in biblical times, then you should be disgusted that women are having abortions today. And that's why I believe progressives are under the kingdom of Satan. It's because these things are evil and demonic. Yes. We, we aren't living in uh, ancient times anymore, but that doesn't matter. Because even though the times have changed, the game remains the same. And by that... I mean, Satan's agenda to kill, steal, and destroy, you know, which is in John chapter 10, verse 10, where it says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And in uh, 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8 through 9, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Okay, and in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, it says, And then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. 
and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now, in this context, it's talking about him knowing uh, the soul belonged to one of his prophets that he ordained, who would come to be born. But that still shows you that God has plans for people, and he knows them before they're born because he's omnipotent, and they do have a soul. All right? Okay, y'all young ladies need to understand something. God is not playing around when it comes to having these babies, man. Y'all need to make sure that y'all are having these kids in wed, uh, wedlock and that you have plans, financial plans, that you have dreams, something like that going on. If you don't have that happening, just pray so that God can provide that for you. There's no excuse for not being able to pray. And But, I mean, if you're in a leftist uh, uh, circle or, or a state or something like that, it's very sad because you're going to have... Obvious peer pressure and things like that, that uh, where people make fun of you because of your faith and uh, you're illogical, something's wrong. You're going to have that kind of uh, stuff happening, which is sad, but God is not playing. The wages of sin is death. This is actually working like a story. It's literally playing out where, uh, like, and it's, I'm seeing it like a story, man. The consequences of the Bible playing out in reality. I can't uh, turn away from it. I can't ignore it. Y'all are being punished because you're having babies out of wedlock with sorry-ass men who like little girls and 15, 16, 17-year-olds, stuff like that. This is really happening. It hurts to see this. And the wages of sin is death. God is actually like, all right, you want to play around with me and you don't want to come to me for help and stuff like that. Uh, you don't want to come to me if you want to look for a husband or something, you know, someone who'll stay with you. You want to keep being attracted to men and all this kind of stuff, or the bad boy or whatever it is, the tough guy and stuff. You don't want to speak up for yourself or you don't want to help come to me so I can help you speak up. And then I'm going to hold you in captivity and make you have that baby. That's just how it is. I'm very sorry to say that. And, and that's what it is. There's some people, man, it... Yeah, I could, I could actually use some worse language than that, but that's how it is. And I am sorry, but that's going to happen. Many of you are going to perish. You're going to go through pain where these states are making these girls sit here and, and have these babies and stuff. That's going, you're going to be in captivity. Yes, you are. And yes, you deserve it because these are babies, man. These are, these are, God knows these children for their born has plans for them. And you want to sit up here and make this about some sex and trying to be grown and watching the teen, uh, uh, what is it, the teen mom and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I'm going to get me a baby. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's funny and all this kind of stuff, having babies at a wedlock. You, all right, well, you go ahead and you enjoy that. And I'm going to pray for you guys that uh, that maybe maybe instead of having that baby, that uh, you know maybe the guy pulls out or something like that. Or maybe it, you'll end up having uh, relationships with guys who have bad seed and uh, are not very fertile uh, men. Uh, uh, you know, maybe something like that instead, so you don't get pregnant, you know, and that, and, and that the, the spirit touches you and that you actually will, uh, withhold sex until that time comes to be married. That's all I can do, uh, that I can say about that. And I'm done with it. Okay. Now when it comes to health, you have to attack this from more than one angle because Americans health and the food industry are tied together, as I'm sure many of you may know. So what we need to be doing is targeting big food and mandating that they remove processed sugars like high fructose corn syrups and products. And they need to also be taking out the soy because they seem to be uh, putting that in everything. So these are these are fat uh, causing uh, substances. You know, and they didn't even use all of these substances. They didn't use this stuff in the 50s and the 60s. And obesity at that time wasn't, it was, it was much less of an issue. You did have obesity, but it was much less of an issue than it is today. Now, um, once we do this in tandem with instituting, let's say, a single-payer health care system, I think public health is going to increase in this country for sure. You know, people are going to be at lower weights and things like that. Uh, and then after that, we can talk about implementing a law that will allow the government to negotiate the prices of medicine and so on. Okay, so this is what the left is doing. I think this is good stuff, but again, it's a multi-pronged kind of effort in order to get this stuff done. It's not a, a one-way uh, street kind of thing here. Now, even as a Christian, I am for all of that. Now, why is that? It's because Jesus would have wanted the same thing. Come on, guys. Jesus healed the sick and he fed the poor. Now, in this point in history where technology has been the most advanced as it's ever been, we have the technological capacity to produce enough food for everyone. 
And we don't even have to contend with the climate to do that or anything. Or uh, uh, land uh, availability, all that stuff. Every city should have some kind of vertical farming unit that utilizes hydroponics to provide the bare necessities like cabbage, tomatoes, onions, beans, things like that for free. Or very, very low costs. You know what I mean? I'm talking about back to the days how it used to be in the 50s and 60s. Real low costs. You know, I'm talking 50 cents for a pound and all that kind of stuff. Seriously. Uh, fish would also be something we could make available for a very low cost, uh, if not free as well. You know, uh, farming and, and putting them in these uh, uh, these tanks and things like that and uh, feeding them the n uh, nutrients and things. And there's ways to do that as well. Uh, now, when it comes to meat, red meat and all that kind of stuff, you know, we uh, we should still rely on the farmers for that kind of stuff. That's like that's actual that's food. That's stuff that yeah, you got to work or whatever it is you got in order to afford that. Uh, but yeah, uh, guys, if you're going to be uh, in the business uh, mentality, heaven is not for you. Okay.